hope you're doing well. In this episode, I'm going to do a painting of water lily. This is actually the first time I do a water lily painting, so it's quite interesting. And I will probably approach this painting differently if I will do it again. But I think this painting turns out okay, so I want to share with you here. So here I start with a drawing. And、um, drawing is actually very boring to watch, if you ask me. So I sped it up a little bit. But drawing is very important. It's the backbone of your painting. It's the foundation. So if you don't do a good drawing before you start to paint, you will likely fail the painting. Okay, there's some people might able to just go to painting directly, but for me, I need a good decent drawing. That doesn't mean I do a lot of details on my drawing. But I do need to figure out a few things, which is size and placement of the things in the painting and decomposition. So depends on the subject. I may do a drawing ten or maybe even thirty minutes if I doing a portrait. But for this one, I'm mainly just trying to figure out a good composition. So here's the first wash, and、uh, you want your first wash to have plenty of water, so you can form a bead and have it bring it down. Now I plan to have the water from light to dark, and from more of a bluish color to warmer color. So as you can see, I'm building up a bead here. Because I want the water surface to have a clean wash. So as I bring down the wash, I try to be careful and to preserve the highlight. Now I think one of the thing I've done that if I do it again, I'll do differently is that I'll probably leave a fewer white, because I try to leave out the lily pad completely. But actually, that's not really necessary because the first wash is going to be really light. So just a few white pieces would do. So if I were done this painting again, I'll probably do a much cleaner first wash, and without stressing myself so much on preserving all the whites that I do here. So as you can see, as I come down, I make the color warmer and a little bit darker. I try to hang it around the flower here, being a little bit extra careful on that because that flower is probably our main subject here. So I finished the first wash here, and now I'm moving on to starting doing the the lily pad. Now the far distant ones, I pretty much pre-wet the surface and drop it in some colors so they kind of fade it out, have a very soft edges. But you need to make sure that your paint, your mixture is fairly dry. If there's too much water, it's just going to explode all over the place. So for each lily pad, I basically do a good shape, a clean wash, and then I drop in some colors. So some of lily pad has warmer color, some of it has cooler color, some of it has is a little bit lighter, some of it darker. But this can only be achieved when it's still wet. So we have to keep in mind that one wash, one shape. So in this case, each lily pad is one shape, and I've done it in one wash.
I added a lily pad here just to connect um, the background and the foreground just for better composition because I try to lead your eye from the bottom left corner to the right and then to the left again into the distance so that lily pad will help the viewer to connect the dot as I continue to do the lily pad I try to paint them together here to do it all together in one wash some of the lily pads are separated but for some of it like this I want to group them together and I can always separate them later with a little bit of shadow but it's good to connect them together like this so you get a clean wash and the color consistency So again, adding some warm color here while the paint is still wet. As long as the wash is still wet, as long as the paint is still wet, you can fix, uh, or, or should I say, you can adjust the shape. And you can add the color, you can change the color. You can drop in some color and it'll mix itself, it'll fix itself. That's the beauty of the watercolor, is that you let it do its work. Now moving down to the the main group of lily and the flower. I'm using a brush that's a little bit bigger so I can force myself to finish painting each lily pad with as few brush strokes as I can. There's just nothing better than the energy, the freshness of a single brush stroke like that. So I'm being a little bit careful to make sure the lily pad has a good shape, but at the same time, I don't try to keep dapping at it. I try to make sure, sink twice, and then put down each brush stroke to have each brush stroke mean something. Gonna carefully paint around the flower. Cause the foreground flower is actually white, so I want to preserve that. Now while it's still wet, I starting to add some more uh, value to some of the lily pad. Just give it a little bit of variation, because there's so many repetitive shape here. And if I paint them all the same, it's going to look boring. So when we're painting something like this uh, with so many repetitive elements, it's very important to kind of vary uh, either the color or the size or the value. Now I'm working on the flower itself. So what I basically do is I mix a light pink color. Uh, I think it was quad rose and then I just put down a pretty free shape and then use some clean water to soften it up. And uh, while the paint is still very, very wet, uh, I drop in some dark underneath so it gives it more volume so it feels like there's a form and then the one in the middle ground same thing the basic color wash some volume at the bottom and then for this one I actually put
put in some yellow in the middle before the paint is dry. And that makes the anther of the flower. Now the foreground flower. It is white, but I can't just leave it completely white because it's not that white. You know, even if you look at the white things around you, it's always have color because the light around it or the shadow on it. So I mix a fairly neutral gray, a little bit warm gray, and then just paint on it. So the same thing, I use it as sort of a base. And then I use some uh, clean water to soften it up. But at the same time, I give it some more volume by adding uh, different color variation. and some dark in the bottom. Now this is quickly taking form with just a little variation that I add. So here comes the form shadow in the bottom. And a little bit of shadow here and there actually will make separations. So you can see I purposefully leave a little bit of white between the petals so they feel more separated. And here is the anther. Now it's time to do the reflection on the water, so I pre-wet the paper. And then while it's still wet, I drop in some darks within the area that I was pre-wetted. So it'll be very clean and soft. So I gotta always try to pre-wet the area bigger than I thought, so the paint will not go and it will not have a uh, at hard edge. So I'm trying to design the reflection a little bit so it helps the overall composition. And I also add some reflections on the bottom of some of the lily pads even though it's not really in the photo. I think adding a little reflection really helps the lily pad sitting on the water surface. Drop a little pink reflection for the flower. Now there's quite a bit of white area around the stem of that flower, so I just kind of paint around it and uh, adding some dark using the reflection and the shadow to make, to fix that um, exceeding white area. So it doesn't feel like there's this white halo around the flower. And that works out pretty well. So again, that's one of the things that I will probably approach differently if I would do it again. I probably won't leave that much white. I mean, some of the white will help the painting to have this breathing room and it doesn't feel so dead, but I think I leave a little bit too much white. So I'm continuing down the reflections.
Now this is reflection, but also in the shadow, so it has to be quite dark. So even though it looks pretty dark right now, it will fade off quite a bit. So I will do a second glaze on top when it's dry. Use some more clean water and extend the wet area so it can run down. Now a second layer of dark. I try to drop it in while it's still wet so it will be still soft. Now as you can see, once I drop in that heavy dark underneath the white flower, the flower pops up a lot more. And that contrast will just lead your eye into the painting. And I think it's a fun subject. I'll probably do it again. Actually, the student told me that it's, a, it's quite a popular subject. never really saw water lily is a popular subject, but I guess people like it. So these are some final touches. I'm adding uh, some shadows on the lily pad itself. And it's funny how was that little line, this little bits of shadow, little bits of dark, you start to see lily pad has some thickness. And it creates a form, so they're no longer feeling like papers. And I break up the the shadow shape a little bit. I can just do lines everywhere. Right? If you can break it up a little bit, it will look more interesting. So some of the shadow I actually they are cast shadows um, in between the lily pads. So here's the part that when I put a, a little bit of shadow, it will separate them. Now here I put a cast shadow here and you can immediately see the lily pads on the top, they're overlapping. Some dry brushing in some um, very warm orange, just to give the lily pads a little bit more textures. Not on all of them, but just some of them. And now I add even more cast shadow under the white flower, so it pops even more. And that's arguably our main focus, so do everything to pop it out. Now I do a glaze on the bottom of the painting. I turn the painting around so the paint will run the other way so it doesn't gather all the way in the bottom. And I use some waters at the end of the glaze to give it a soft gradation. I 
and I feel like the lily pad is still a little bit too much the same so I add some cast shadow on some of it so it feels like there might be a branch of the frame that's casting the shadow there and I think that works out pretty nicely adding some more little bits and pieces the overall painting looks really clean Now I add a little bit more blue for the shadow part of the water lily in the front. Just to give it more form. Some final touches here and there. And I splatter on some dark I call them visual noise because some of the noise can make it a little bit more natural looking and then more interesting. And there you have it, the water lily pond. Hope you enjoy that. I will see you again soon. Thank you for watching. If you find this video helpful, please subscribe and visit my website at cafewatercolor.com. Sign up for a newsletter to get a free fast track watercolor PDF guide. It is a 32 pages guide that will help you to get started with watercolor.